going to have to go for it. Yeah, uh, there is benefit in it. If you yes. decide to take control over an area, it can have massive rewards. You've just got to make sure you are making the absolute right chance. You know the fact that there is so much pressure on these teams. And everybody, let's be honest, this is something that could be a grand final slot. So this yes. is... This is about to get ridiculous real fast. Right as soon as the plane goes up, you can hear all the players actually screaming back behind us. Yes, I mean, the excitement is through the roof right now. I mean, the tension, palpable. Everybody coming in here today, you know, Tiggleton was asking for hugs because he was, you know, feeling so stressed out about today. The emotions are high, the tension is high, and that's going to come through in the games. Wait, and that you, should come through for the, the viewers. Did you get Tiggleton hug too? Yeah. Am and I a like Shrimzy hug. Am I like the only person that didn't get tickled tonight? You didn't. You didn't I, go ask I for guess a tickled hug. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to ask them for a hug. <laughs> maybe you just didn't bump into it. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. That's okay though. With everything, we'll see. Uh, pretty simple. Place. You're missing yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, well, no, I've got hugs. From <laughs> Shrimzy okay, hugs are okay. magical. Shrimzy does give the best hugs. This is true. Well, I mean, okay. So Pachinki is not going to be contested by the Sonics. That's probably the kind of focal point here to start this. It's been one of the biggest storylines of the event. Hey. They do th right now. They've been doing their best when they don't have it. Yeah, 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 totally. No, I mean, like, look, they've been playing good outside of it anyway, and uh, you know, we we know that SGD is completely bananas and is not going to not fight for this. So you got to go do something else. Uh, you know, credit to SGD in a way that they have the tenacity and that sort of devil may care attitude. Oh, well, ho, 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 ho. of course, of course, Matrim. Are you kidding me? We go to a chicken dinner match, and our first one is going to be on military base island. But hey. Mega Puff fans, good time to be you. Well, yes. I, <laughs> Wait, that is a whatever you want to call that. The research facility right next to it, other oh, radar tower. Oh no, Sophia. Yeah. Sophia down, and it's just gonna be more going to PO. Follows it up, and SGD, the first one's out. Tough, tough start for us. That's right. Okay, <laughs> new circle's about to pop. Uh, it it can kind of still go anywhere, but it is gonna stay on the wow. bridge. Wow. Wow. Eesh. Wow. I mean, this is a brutal circle. It is. I, I mean, next circle will, of course, shift south, uh, you know, very hard. But it, oh, they are totally fine. Bagel Pots to come down off that tower. And this is where that tower sucks, because coming down off of this, yes, you have information. But in this format in particular, oh, my clip. everybody's got information. That was over the freaking building. What the hell, man? Everybody clip, knows. Clib says no. Overpeakers are going to get a chicken dinner today. Everybody knows you're coming. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the... So, now I think that Burrow might be getting lazy, and that's what BBL was waiting for. Code Marco is going to take one down. Now the opportunity to move forward. It is a quick push coming out from BBL. Follow-up's going to be coming out. Thunderloss does go down to the zone with some shots that also came his direction. BBL knows the fact that they need to get out of the zone as fast as possible. Burrow already making a push back into this position. BBL, though, still with three up, are trying to make sure that they can find an angle into the two still up for Burrow. Code Marco goes ahead and finishes off the other two. Now, how is BBL's approach going to come into this one as it looks like they are going to go ahead and try to crest the top. Got to be careful for the nades, though, as the ship is going to come down. Kynex takes a lot of damage, peeks back into it, but BBL now inside a safe zone has some time to breathe as a nade's going to land right on top of him. Yeah, that was a good grenade from Smash. He already caught a weakened Kanaxi after Kanaxi had landed a headshot. And now Noadra, the only one left for the side of Buram. As he is going to watch them cross. I mean, everybody's weakened. He could do some real damage here. Code Marco got taken out by Lucaruk, so it's a 1v1. Smash yet again, the last one up for BBL, trying to make sure that their hopes and dreams have an opportunity here. Looks in, connects with a few shots, but he is going to go down, and therefore Burram takes some casualties, but at least gets control over this. In this one, it feels like they've got a good read on it. The only thing that uh, you should be concerned with if you're an Overpeakers fan is New Happy. He keeps trying to venture into the west, instead now is looking to the south in Overpeakers' direction. There's no more door to shut, and Clib had quite a few more grenades, so he's kind of waiting for the timing, the res to come through, and then a grenade, I would think, should be entering this door. Oh, it just came up short, splashed on the outside. Attempt, again, from Jeems. Wow, they have a lot of frags. I mean, Bagel Paw has to find an out. It, this is a really dangerous to be in, building to be in with this many frags in hand of your opponent. I mean, overpeakers can't make too much of a move is the issue in and of themselves because they still also have Sonics in 22. So 
this is a very awkward situation for them. But James just says, screw it. I've got goals. These guys have been pissing me off for a while. Moving in, seeing if maybe he can connect Nate into that one. But that's just going to reveal angles. Tosses it in. Does manage to take those aim. Now looking through the windows. You see BGP was not expecting this. James deciding to take Destiny into his own hands. Molotov's going to come in as well. He knows exactly They're where done. the lineup's going to come. And there you go. Over peekers pick it up. That's a great push by James. I mean, he rode. Their top five has to make a go of it with their vehicle. They cannot break through Tyloo's Ooh. defenses. They're going to be running right through Sonics. I mean, this is not looking good. Oh, that vehicle is on fire. Jumps out. They do get to a dip. Managed to avoid the vehicle explosion, but Sia is so close. Manages to hit the shots on expert. Now it's just a matter of time. Looking in back behind us, and it's also going to be New Happy trying to get an angle in as well. Nice toss on an aid. Sia yet again finding success. When I dip, you dip, we dip. A team that can play edge, I, I think, better than maybe anybody in the world. It, sh it could, should be New Happy. We do have New Happy that was trying to harass Overpeakers. Overpeakers now making the move in. Already going to have one of the members go down. Overpeakers, while they got success against Begopa, are going to regroup right next to a tree and near on no other cover. As if they go north, they're going to be moving right into Surfers. Fae is now starting to make more of an aggressive stance into this one. Fex is going to connect one more nade. And now it's on Zenon back behind this one. He had a lot of success over in America. Is now starting to lead the way. Tropic is also going to get eliminated, but Sonics finds himself with Tyler. Close range fight. CC trying to move in, and Sonics just could not hold their dip. Ty Lu now starting to come alive at this stage. Uh, Ty Lu is far strong and has complete control over the northeastern edge. Now, New Happy was able to kind of use the chaos of this situation to sneak some members underneath this. Mime's still alive as well. See if primetime has shown up for the grand survival. This is going to be... <laughs> just clinging to life right here. Ty Lu is just on fire right now, and they want to set Mime on fire. He's going to go down, drops us down to eight teams. Ty Lu now in control of all of the North. Nobles now starting to come out. There is nowhere for Polish power to go. They are just being picked apart over here. But Ty Lu now starting to get vision on what's happening at range, trying to make sure that they can get some damage into Petrichor Road as well. Cerberus hears this is now moving in from the south. While Petrichor Road does get control over this area, it is coming at a massive cost. In the meanwhile, trying to contain that southern edge. In fact, they're going to go right by New Happy. New Happy has the car out front. Tyler's going to stop. Are they going to react to time? Oh. CP Spray is a good, but Ming Ming's is. This is just full on. New Happy's lined up. They've got a perfect kill box into this. 22 was trying to look down, but Ty Lu makes a fatal mistake at this change. Now, one more player coming in. Sing if maybe he can do something to New Happy. New Happy, tatter, no helmet, weakened armor still looking through this. They have got to make a way into the circle, but it is finally going to be Ty Lu, who has been a thorn in so many team sides, going out. New Happy, while you got the shack, you yeah, instead leaning back into the dip, getting it down onto AT pretty much establishes the way that they're going to push into this, but with Cerberus having that high ground control means the fact that this could be a death trap for 22. They realize that they just want to get control over this hill, but by making sure to keep an eye on phase, they are starting to surrender area to New Happy. Yeah, exactly, and Cerberus as well. Both two teams that are very keen to capitalize onto this. We're down to our top four old Tycons. Those kind of players need to come up huge, and already Aix left has got the knock on the HS. That's the Groza. Looking into New Happy's direction, wants to secure the low section of this hill. That means that New Happy now having to look into 22's direction. Cerberus, fine here. They want everybody else to fight, so that way they can swoop in and just be vultures to take this game. Nades are continuing to rain in the direction, but you can see that Petricor Road does not want to overstep. 22, on the other hand, moves in, gets a rock, so that way they can try to get just a touch more high ground to look into the smokes, get some cover with it as well, but they have got to be careful as Petrico Road also gets vision into it, and it's going to be New Happy eliminated first and doing it now with just three teams up. 22 is the odd team out looking into very strong four-man and three-man squads controlling very strong sections of this map. Petrico Road though, having to play more defensive. Aixa does spot out Haven, and 22 now just only has Gizera up and nowhere to go. There's too many teams around him. They know where he's at. He's going to go down, and now the three V4 starts. Uh, Petrico Road is so pinned down and a bunch of damage. Aix left already on the ground. Ming is hurt, but there's a return fire. It's just long left. No, he's gone. It's going to be Cerberus taking the first game and going to the grand finals. Cerberus, you can see the elation on their faces. First game in, first game out. Pressure relieved. Grand finals time. They're right behind us. I mean, congratulations. Yeah, to that them. was a bit of that yelling I was talking about <laughs> a second ago. And already, so a lot hey, of stress. Let's guys? go. Hi. Let's go, boys. Tygon just gave right in the game. Yeah, absolutely. It's the USG Donuts uh, coming in. Uh, you know, our Japanese representative, a team that has won a game at least so far this tournament. So who knows? It's it's only one. But I got an interesting stat here for you, my Ooh, friend. Yeah. Uh, so we had 
five teams coming into today to this to this grand survival that had three chicken dinners. That was the most anybody had was three chicken dinners uh, coming into this out of all of our teams that are present. Okay, we had five of them. Mm -hmm. Four of those were our final four teams. So New Happy, Petrichor Road, Cerberus, and 22 Esports all had three chicken dinners so far this event. The only other team that has three chicken dinners so far this event uh, that was not present in our final four, of course, because it's not possible, Burram United. Well then, uh, is, does that mean that Burram is due? Or does that mean the fact that everybody I, you know, else is I mean, we, up some... Let's lean into the gambler's fallacy. Yes, spur arms do. Let's go. Wait, you told me yesterday that the gambler's fallacy never works. Yeah, but I changed my mind. All right, see. I'm a gambler. Whatever what can I say? When it comes time for Roll the dice, Cam. Oh, wow, we already got some yells going on, man. <laughs> yeah, man, they're fired up. All right. Uh, I just almost kind of wish you guys could hear some of the... Uh, like, we should just mic the players at some point. Just put a, like, a microphone right in the middle of it so you can hear. Every once in a while, they do, like, point across at each other that since we have the teams just looking directly at each other across this opening, so... It makes it kind of fun. Um, speaking of fun, we do have drops coming in, but nothing crazy. Looks like everybody's going to go ahead and get to somewhere safe. Burram makes the drop in, and hey, we're down in the south, but not southwest. Yeah, this is this is uh, kind of a slightly different circle than maybe some of the Miramars we saw yesterday, right? Uh, this is more like... Creep in, gets more control. It does look like FaZe is going to make a full wave push over into the east. Diggory's already repositioned around it, looking into the dip. So now he's going to be able to take some shots, but he's going to go down. DG just spins back around into this one. Nate's going to come out from FaZe. Circle's going to pop, and it's going to go to the south. That means the fact that this fight needs to end quickly because FaZe knows that this is no longer a territory that they're going to try to control. So how do they want to move through? This was, it's going to be Aitsy now moving down in the dip, seeing if he can spot some more with it. Aston does finally get spotted out, so he's going to be eliminated as well as 22. But now, these has teammates. Aitsy just looks like he's going to run back, get some support, get a nade, and yep, tag it up together. He already knows where to drop it. That should connect. He's going to run away. Now no cover to be had. Nicely paid. I phased. Yeah, really nice damage in return to Petrichor Road. Trimsy up and oh, over. Grenades right in his face. They're going to back him off, but really the, only the knock to Ming so far to Petrichor Road. The damage done in this fight. T5 also has vision. Well, not clean vision on this, but will whenever this fight is over. New Happy also caught up in what's going to be going on as SGD does go down. BBL still holding over here. Polish power going to be to the east of them. Ming Ming trying to get some vision in what's going on with BBL as these fights are just about trying to find a way into the zone. Sonic is going to have one of the members go down from Jeems. Remember, we were talking about him a while ago as the rest of Over Peakers are going to try to defend up this angle with T5 and Tyloo. So really, this is going to be really hard for anybody to come through. BBL is going to go down as we still have Polish Power making a move. And moving into the new circle as it begins to collapse. Where will Phase 6 take us? We have managed to see most of our teams kind of compress into this one. Long on the outside of it, just to the west of Sonics. You can see, kind of covered up by Ming Ming, laying in damage onto Polish Power. Looks like they are going to go out right there. Now it's going to be New Happy that's going to have to move to the south, where T5 is already going to be positioned up at Sonics. They're also pretty close along this wall. Don't forget about Overpeakers and Tyloo, just to the south. Yeah, this gets tricky now for the Sonics, who are just kind of getting harassed by OP and other teams as they try to work this cliff line. This circle phase making their move right now. Rasa the Jr. can't see New Happy, just going for some prey and spray into the smoke. I mean, New Happy trying to move into this. Coming up back behind T5 is going to allow Sonics to have some more breathing room. All tops were dropped down right on top of them. But now New Happy contending with a very strong squad in T5 that's got a defensive line. Just Ming Ming up near on no life. But you know he wants the game in his hands. Trying to move forward into it. He is going to go down. And now it's going to be Tyloo trying to move into Tingleton's sightlines. He's going to go down. Get one player into the center of the circle. Yeah, CC down for Ty Lu as they begin to try to do their own work onto the Sonics. They've got plenty of frags. They're doing some serious damage. If that one got up and did it, just came short. Tickleton and Trimsey, the dynamic duo for the Sonics, hanging on by a thread right now. Is now two down, three down for Theraton 5 as USG has pushed out, and they want to clear the high ground. They've stepped up into this area. They had control down to the lower spot, and they want to make sure that they clean this up, and that is a good call. Try to pounce whenever teams are weakened. They come into this T5, come out already. He's damned if he does still. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's damned. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. My he is just gone. Yeah, I, yeah dude. He, I was going to say he was damned if he did, damned if he didn't. I mean, either way, he was screwed. Yep. Uh, I do have to point out, OP's got themselves a good sight line into this. They can also play from safety, looking up that ridge. And this is a team that we have seen them in that last game put up. Somebody making the mad dash for the center dot. USG's got some vision into it. Korn's going to go ahead and regroup here. But you can see, it's just some hills, some pats. 
that's that's about it. As overpeakers know, they're going to be walking into a no man's land. Diggory finally gets the vision on the tongs, and now you can see Tyloo's like, "What the hell do we do?" Yeah, that is just unfortunate. But OP, perfect for overpeakers. Exactly. OP is going to try to take advantage of a oh! big grenade from Lucarox finds two. That is massive. USG suddenly at the tables turned on him. Diggory still trying to bend up. Does manage to get another one down. Tyloo goes out. You can see that Bay is still clinging to life over here, but it's going to be overpeakers trying to make the push in as USG trying to recover. And oh, Tropic no. trying to hold the line into this one. Molotov's going to come down, take down another one. Americano trying to step away, but doesn't have the ambition. It's just smokes everywhere. Diggory now trying to defend up over here against overpeakers. Smokes still advantaging. He got nailed by the Molly, though, and he's just barely going to survive. Is he going to find enough time to get a heal off is the real question. Stunned between both teams. A Molly out towards Entropic. Doesn't catch anybody on them. It's going to be a prone for Ivis. They're waiting for Americano to come out. He's going to inch around to the edge, not finding anything. More Mollies to clear space here for the side of Entropic. A stun as well, but still Diggory, the wild card in play. So much coming down into the stage. Overpeaker still with three up right now, but it's just going to be tattered teams coming in behind this. EIQ looking for Americano, still playing Austin Smokes, but it's going to be Diggory again trying to take some form of control in this game. Overpeakers are so close to him, though. He's got to be careful with this. Smoke's coming down, but keep in mind, Entropic is going to have vision on Overpeaker's position. All right, Diggory. Can you pull off some magic? Can you pull out some There's of that 2019 phase magic? Is it there? Three members up for overpeakers, but they're stuck on the edge. Diggory has such a good angle down into this. The Molly's caught a couple of them. They're stuck on the edge of the blue. He's raining with the AK. Can he find the knock? No, it's going to be the blue that gets him. No. And with this, there's only one member up for EIQ. Overpeakers coming in. They've got the number. Spray's going to go ahead and connect on the ones. Evos is trying to hold this one out. Blue's going to be coming up back behind him. Sprays. Evos bouncing between everything, trying to get oh. some vision. It's Clip is going to go down and it's going to be exchanged. Overpeakers get it with the last bit of the 1v1. Oh, there's no way these guys played this game. So patient, so smart. Clips, Car 98 ran out of bullets and they still come through and win this. You can see big hugs all around. The veteran boys from the Overpeakers get it done. What a nail. Back to Aaron Gelt for match number three. Only two more teams. That's it. That's all that could qualify for the grand finals here at PGC 2022. I mean, we've got one APAC, one EU. Are we going to get an NA? Are we going to get an Asia? Only time will tell. Well, I don't know. This is going to be rough. Okay, time to call your shot on chat right now. Say, this is the team that I think is going to go forward at least in this round or the next. You know, sometimes they always want us to put like our money where our mouth is and like make yeah, calls yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. It's your turn, chat. That's right. That's right, chat. Get in there and let us know who you like. Who do you like? You know what? I'm going to make you put your money where your mouth is. You just, you know, ask this of chat. I feel it's only fair. I'm going to probably betray my region and <gasps> say that I think that I want to see FaZe go after what Diggory Faze. just did in that last one. I think that they, you can tell. They're they deserve it, dude. Uh, they've been playing so good. I'm right there with you. I'd, I'd like... Also Burrow, oh, man. I love Burrow. Burrow. BBL. I know. We all love Burrow. Uh. BBL, too. It's, it's so hard to choose, right? I mean... Uh, I almost want to see the donuts just because that was such a devastating grenade. I mean, that grenade ended the round for them. I... Yeah, well, no. Nah, I see you can keep on that track. I mean, okay. I'll give you BGP, though. I'll give you BGP. Well, I mean, obviously, I want to see BGP. I, I know, of course, you want to see BGP. Yeah. You're a big P, uh, PO fanboy. Yes, I know. of course, yes. Oh, as everybody should. You should. Everybody should be, yes. So, we've now made our way over towards Erangel, uh Plane Path, just bisected right through the middle of the map. Um, through, see how we're going to drops coming out. Uh, BBL is going to be playing over to the west. You can see making a rotation in uh, T5. Looks like they're already hopping in vehicles and they're going to head that western direction. Circle is going to go very hard to the north and a couple of cheers and happy sounds coming out of the players. I think that was, I think that was a tropic. <laughs> they probably went to a 22, also just making a crash right into Severny. Spray's going to be coming out. Gizera is going to go down, but it's going to be running right into the low ground positions for SGD. Shots are already going to come out and you can see two down and now just one up trying to make the run away he's gonna go down vehicles and loot just delivered at SGD's doorstep yeah you can see everybody's it's coming apart over here but we did see Petrocore Road manage to bypass most of this with the distraction that Exelf managed to set up so they are now gatekeeping out this firefight as GX still needs to move forward Nates are gonna come into it Norikus is still alive but it's not gonna be for too much longer Savior now has to make the send it and does get the knock this is really problematic for Petrocore Road yeah that was a great little grenade there attempt by Norcus to use his teammate as bait he put it right 
right on his teammate, hoping that they'd be going for the flush. But it's Chicken Dinner. You don't need to go for the flush here. It doesn't matter. Zen Nan still alive, still holding on. Norcus continues to throw stuns on the outside. It's buying him a little bit of time, but that door is still shut. An angle down in into the shack. It's going to be good for Yan Lee and GEX. That 1v1, though, bought the time for Long to reposition right over here next to Ming, so could get the res onto it. New Happy doesn't have the angle. GEX stalled out, still outside of the zone, has to move in. Long's got to figure out, okay, what do I do? He's going to start tossing out some nades. Oh. Going to connect on a good shot. Actually, that's going to be support at range. It's going to be Entropic that's making sure to punish this one. So really, it's just onto Long to try to hold it on weakened team members that are going to be coming in. Smoke's out. How is he going to try to handle this? I don't think that he knows how close this is. No, this is tough. This is really, SSR really tough. SSR is right next to him. I think SSR has a much better idea of his enemy's oh. position, and Yap just sprays him right in the behind, and that's going to be Petrichor Road down into 14th SSR, the sole survivor for GEX. Kind of what we're looking at right now. Hey, there's a car there already. Oh, that shotgun could have had an idea that was going to go off for it, but instead coming into a very nice position that was already pre-set up. We saw a second ago Sonics also trying to make a push into phase as uh, we still have not a lot of the Exodus continuing with BBL and Burger Rom not making their moves just yet. I think the Sonics have to fight this, so it's going to be pre-grenades out from Phase Clan. They kind of know it. Sonics pull up short. Their smoke's already out, so it obscures their exact positions, oh, but you can kind of guess based on the sounds of the cars where their players are. Now that you has is starting to slip out into the open, and that's going to punish Mime there by fact. Really nice shooting, and they're just going to wipe him out. Wow. They were making sure that Mime was gone from this lobby. Sonic's now needing to move in and just cannot find an opening in FaZe's line of defense. Throwable's now going to come out. That's going to be Tiggleton going down as well. Diggory, yeah, uh, Diggory, I got to say, he's having some moments this last week. Oh, those grenades can be really, really good. The first one for Shimsy, no, the second one doesn't get into the window, so he's not able to find anything. It's going to be a Herculean task if Trimsy can get it done. Oh, God, here comes BBL now. They're trying to exploit. They just roll right into this. They are going to connect with some of these shots, and now Gustav trying to fend up backside. This one is going to connect. Digger is going to go down. So looking at the two, AC now moving forward into BBL. Code Marco is going to be on the opposite side around from this one. Last one up, so it is a 2v1 in an expected crash. Code Marco trying to get some more information. Blind it out. He's going to go down, and now FaZe continues to keep control of this location. An absolutely beautiful hold from FaZe. USG trying to cross the street. They made the smoke wall and trying to get in. The stuns are going to come through. Lucrex is hurt. BGB has to hold Bago Pa out. Or excuse me, the other way around. Burram has to try to get through Bago Pa. Pio, grenade up and over. Going to underhand it. This one has to be really, really good, and it is. It's Cheeksing down. Burram still struggling to get through. DG98, Pio trying to line up on opposite sides of the hills. Nuadra is getting in the vehicle. It looks like he's cutting a different path, but that's going to be over phase's angle. That might not work too well for him. Instead, Silence now starting to settle in as everybody's trying to listen in the footsteps. Nuadra trying to use this angle over here. He does not have that hill. Instead, it's going to be Pio that pushes the smokes, trying to creep into this one, and this is such a massive play coming out from Pio. I don't even think that Buram is expecting the spray's going to come out. They did read it. They get the drop onto him, and now it is just DG98 over here, and he still has to contend with Nuadra on the other side, this is going to be a massive, massive struggle to stay alive in this position. Oh, that flank out from Nuadra was huge. That information so critical there for Buriram to be in a position to be ready for Pio's flank around their left, uh, their right hand side. DG, one of the best tracks, but they res Pio. Well, they now did. they knock DG, but they saw Pio go behind, and it's going to be a quick end for Bago Pa there. It's Full on car just rolling down this hillside. Who's going to take the shots first? Entropic is going to go down. It's a combined effort coming up from Kanaxi and Sophia both. Now, rolling right into this SSR is not going to have vision based off this hillside, but where's New Happy going to go? They're just going to choose this rock, hope that it's going to be safe enough and stop here. Well, now Sophia gets the knock onto ED2 health here for Sophia up and over in Nuadra. Right away, able to get the drop onto him. Leo with the follow-up, pretty darn good. Kanaxi trying to spray along the hill line to find the headshot. It's Jervis's grenade that's going to finish two members of Burr. Um, Kanaxi in the smokes, wounded, but still in the circle. Nope, that grenade is good from Shen. A great finish, but here comes the flank from New Happy. New Happy looked like they were trying to extend into that, but then had to pump the brakes onto it. Faze kind of surrendering this position over into the west for Burr. Um, has kind of phases angles, I believe. So New Happy has to load up in the vehicle and has to make a move, and wherever they go, Matt, it's dangerous. All right, New Happy, you choose to go away from T5, but they do not care. Already gonna get one of them down. Leo's got an angle on the other side. Beyond just trying to send it going by the tree. He's gonna hop out. Doesn't matter, the vehicle is not going to explode until after you're dead.
Yeah, just no one really making a move uh, yeah. fast enough for New Happy to do anything. To follow up on who is North, Rossita Jr., the veteran for Theraton 5, the longtime PUBG Pro, trying to lead the way here. And they've got him under their sights, and they've got him out. SGD falls in fourth. Tyloo is still taking harassing shots into phase, making it as complicated as possible to try to get their res, but they do accomplish it. So we are looking at a 4v4 play, leave one back behind to try to cover it. Which way are they going to go? This could spell pretty much how the game is going to happen. They're just sending it down to a tree, making the pass. Do manage to get there. Phase, though. Gustav does get a knock onto one of them. Molotov's now going to start coming up. Throwable's now in range as we do see T5 move into this position, but it is just narrowly out of throwable range for both of them. Look at the way Vex lines up those mollies. Two to make sure they can't push up, and then the frag to follow behind. And then it's just a shooting gallery for FaZe. They've got three of them knocked, one left to go. Ranger X hurt but not out. Ty Lu trying to see if they can capitalize. Creeping in back behind this, but it's going to be AC that it's trying to defend up for his team. He's got to make sure he holds this flank. Otherwise, what FaZe is trying to do is going to come apart. And he manages to get a knock onto one spray at Tongs. is going to make sure to dissuade any forward movement. Leaning back oh, around oh, into oh. it. He picks up Tongs too. FaZe trying to fight their way through this one right now. Taking on two different teams at the same time. While Fex is down, AC does survive off this position. T5 now trying to commit into the res as we're going to be moving into circle nine in oh, just 10 seconds. I don't know if the, the Molly got shot out of Tong's hands or he had one in it when he got knocked, but that was devastating there. Zhao Yang just gonna have to prone and wait. Some decent damage from Ranger X. Patapong is oh. back up and oh. running. How did that not get him? He is on a sliver of HP left. He's able to prone and get to the hill and not die. Diggory has been knocked. Zhao Yang trying to break the flanks of FaZe. Still trying to creep into that angle where we see AC at, but AC instead going to try to regroup, realizing the fact that it is a 3v2 v1 leaning in. They want to get Diggory back up. Zhao Yang, the was still playing this so quietly. Everybody's dropped down to their bellies. And while, yes, FaZe does have the numbers advantage, information is going to be risky. Any heads popping up are going to get spotted. Good vision coming out from Vex. Now in a 4v2. Are they just going to make the bold push? It looks like that's what's going to happen as T5 steps up, does get the down on Diggory, but now it's just Ranger X. FaZe does manage to pick up their chicken dinner and is going to the grand final. Did you ever doubt it that this team does not have the magic, well you should enough, because they absolutely do have the magic. It's phase. It may not be Sunday, but these guys always find a way to get into the grand finals. Yeah, coming up Woo. big off of that one. Now, just one game left. You can see again relief just mounting for these guys is that was gonna be a potential second game getting right into the end game. LG has gone home, but we are about to have several teams go and accompany them and have to now just sit and watch the remainder of what's going to be happening at PGC. Matchup joined by Paper Thin, and we've got one last game, one last chance to see if you can survive. I mean, this is the most stressful game of all of their careers. It's a Miramar to end the day. One goes through, Gen G joins the lobby. One shot at greatness, one shot at the grand finals. I mean, FaZe just did it. Can Genji replicate some of that magic from 2019? That being said, their star player Peel over on Bago Pak. Can they get through? Can an Asian team get through today? Right now, it's been an APAC team and two EU teams, NA as well, looking for their ticket, another ticket into the grand finals. Who boy, Matram, and a not so great plane bath. It's easterly shifted. It's cutting off, a, you know, some of the easier drops to like El Pozo, Monte Nuevo, those areas. Uh, but uh, most of the stuff is actually pretty much in play. I gotta say, I'm confused. I saw this little package that they were playing during the break where they were like, oh, Pio is definitely a person that would survive longest. I don't understand it's, where that came it's, from. Okay, 50 50 chance I'm he not, could be the person to survive the longest. Elsewise, he's gonna first go do PO things. If it works, great, he lives through the apocalypse. If not, he's gonna be like one of the first people to die. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest. You're, oh, you're flipping what? a coin. What? Okay, well, Team no, and This uh, can't be intentional. No, this is gonna be a tail end drop right over here next to Chumacera. BBL is gonna be back behind it. This is not what either one of these teams are wanting for a chicken dinner situation, to say the least. I wonder if somebody's going to maybe oh, and Circle even leaves too. be able to get a vehicle and just peace out early. New Happy uh, sends another player out very, very early with the the Circle going up to the north. So HS trying to get ahead of things. Mime already from the Sonics, uh, you know, up there in that Minas oh, gotta... land ratio. Well, Gen G has got a goal, and that goal is going to be having to contend with T5. That's pretty close. Unfortunately, Nautics is already going to go down. And 
Well, they only have one game. I don't think that Gen G is going to win. I don't understand this. this. I, I fully don't understand this match room. They had an okay-ish spot that wasn't great. It wasn't terrible, but this is this is ambitious. I don't feel like they had enough information to be making this move. Now, Adder around the corner against Patton Pong. Oh. Can he get another? No. Gen G, one and done, in and out. They are out of BGC. I think into this area, SGD is still trying to make that path, but it's going to be right next to Entropic, so Nalef is going to be able to get the down into it, and this is just all about the crossroads. Everybody is trying to send it in to try to find some safety. These couple of dips are just providing anything for these tries to try to survive it. Uh, this is really difficult for SGD. There's just too much underneath yeah. them that's open in the southern part of the circle, so they're going to start getting ripped apart here between multiple teams. Leo still alive on his motorcycle, going to Make a desperate no, run, but no, I, you're absolutely right. I, it's just too hard on a motorcycle with how good these players are. Uh, that's, you know, there's just I, mutually assured destruction for Ty Lu and GEX, it looks like. This southern area just being a, a, a little bit taller on the Death Star's trench side. Oh my god, we're even going back into the fields even more? Okay, sorry. Going back into GEX, still just trying to cling to life over here. You can see that trying to reset New Happy's probably just going to be content to let them be. But my god, Paper, where do these teams go? Like hay bales? It's, this is really, really tough. If you're on the edge, you want to wait. That's two down for GEX, and there is just not much hope with Zen not on the left. Okay, that's a knock on Sia. Not too bad, holding the angle. Uh, you know, there's Rez is being attempted, but he doesn't have any damaging utility, so no mollies, no frags. Zen non continuing to kind of roam around the edge of this shack, seeing if he oh. can finish off Tyloo, but they've got Rez's, they've got health. And New Happy is even coming along over here. It looks like they're trying to see if they can mop up whatever's going on. Kongs doesn't get the cleanest capability to move forward. Zenon still holding back behind this one. New Happy might get vision in just a second. CC, the rest of the team is going to move forward. They're going to go down, but it looks like it's just going to be in time. BBL. Non knows it. He knows he can go up there and clean this out for free. Meanwhile, oh, Ty Lu. Oh, God. Furry oh. Rob. Kanaxi just wipes him out with a well placed grenade. That one just hurts to go out in the chicken dinner last game. That way is just. That one's going to hurt you for a while. Now, New Happy looking in. Looks like they're starting to rally, but it's going to keep yet again finding some capabilities inside. Now, just a 1v1 over here. This is tough, man. This is really tough. I mean, you can see how important this is to both teams fighting tooth and nail. And Kane trying to go for the res. New Happy trying to set up some smokes, see if maybe they can get one of their own. Burry Ram still kind of looming on the edge of all of this. Nan sees HS, and he's going to make the run. I think this res potentially, nope, it's actually going to be USG who's able to get up and running first and able to find the finish. See, now waiting on the next circle and is to make crashes in a chicken dinner game, but you don't have choices here anymore. This is tough. This is really, really tough. Even for some of the teams on the south, can actually trying to make the drive by with Cheeksing in the car. They're just trying to put some pressure down, put some spray into the oh. Sonics, but now oh, you have a Tropic right up ahead. This should be the end of Burry Rom. Rolls in, and yeah, good spray is going to be coming out from Evos. Go ahead and pick up both of them. So now Burry Rom is going to get eliminated as well with this really monstrous. Yeah. Petricor Road, I would normally like this position for them, except that Polish Power's compound is still in the next circle. So it's going to have some purview on the bottom edge of that triangle hill that's up to the front where Entropic is. Now normally you can play Petricor Road trying to make their run in, but it's going to be BBL, Code Marco, Smash, yet a Again, trying to make sure that they survive. It's going to be P.O. on the opposite side. If it does manage to get down onto Code Marco, this is getting to be pretty back and forth. DG98 is going to come in and support, but it's going to be Tiemba that goes ahead and flushes out one section of this. Smash has got to be careful as it's also going to be T5. They can push right back behind him. Oh. He's trying to move through all of this, but it is just so messy. Blind sprays just trying to cling to life. It's going to be P.O. just on the other side of this. He's just trying to get away, figure out what is happening. It's going to be T5 still continuing their pursuit. How is Smash still alive? That one should oh, be good. Yeah, he's done. done. He's done. Smash, no heroics to be found for BBL. And they, too, are eliminated from in there. P.O. somehow, some way, hanging on. But this uh, grenade from Ranger yeah. X, unless that first eight gets off in time, it just Ooh. barely did. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I mean, by the skin of his teeth, P.O.'s getting through. There Never go. mind. There you go. The grenade is going to finish it. Ross the Jr. takes him out. T5 has control of the northern edge. Big goodbye is going to go away. Bullish power feeling pretty good. Petrico it, it, it might be enough for Sonics, but they have to re-rotate. There were no knocks. They couldn't push in time. Smoke walls come out now. It's going to be 22 trying to push into this area. Axelif trying to hold up with long. Get some vision in. Does get some knocks, but it is just going sheer on chaos. Sonics rolling into the same area. Now it's just going to be 22 trying to move in. Axelif trying to dance around, but that's going to be Petrico Road eliminated as well with this.
this. T5 comes in right back behind in Tropic and Sonic. Team's just right over here right now. T5 cannot figure out a way to breach into this, and it's gonna be Gazera that gets the knock onto one of them. H1 is just chilling out, hoping the back that all of these teams will somehow protect him. Looking up the hillside, but it's gonna be 22 that's moving so close into this one. Goes for the spray in, and instead you can see it is just a catastrophe for all these teams. T5's gonna go down. Now it's gonna be oh! H1's Frazen. Gets the double up, trying to cling to life, but there's still multiple members of 22 over here. Oh, they're both pushing into him. H1 did such a good job. He gets another knock with a beautifully placed grenade. Can he keep holding on? This is an absolute miracle so far from H1. 22 right on the other edge of this hill. Two different teams he's trying to hold back right now, and they have got to reset, move away. They do not even know what's going on. It's got to be near on impossible to track what's going on inside this kill feed as the circle moves still into the field. Who would have thought TM but hiding out behind some hay bales would be in one of the safest spots in this game? It's really, really amazing that Tianba has been able to hang on in that position on the western side as long as they have. All the credit in the world of them. Win has the four members of, I know, everybody's getting the resets, everybody's getting the reses. Win fighting to the nail. He's stuck in between them. I mean, the good news in a way is that neither really wants to push over that hill because they don't want to take any damage trying to flush <laughs> him out. Bad. And now we see tons of damage being to Tianba. Now, finally, this field position pays its toll. H win. He put up a heroic attempt, but he is going to go out. Sonic's run. Up and over through smoke. Still not much damage being found with these spray and sprays. Timba, oddly enough, is going to be the one that connects onto Marslik as everyone right now is joining forces to go after Polish power and the defensive line that they've managed to hold up in this. But 22 still cannot quite find it. Finally getting a knock. They have to figure out, is this going to be their moment? There's already two down. It's a 2v3, and they know if they move into that spot, though, EIQ and Tiamba both are going to be taking shots. So hesitation now mounting. They've got to figure out what they want to do. Vehicle now finally flips away, and now Polish power has lost most of their cover. Just one up. Yeah, you can see that they know it, and they're going to try to punish it here. Just putting some damage down into the knock players of Polish Power. Cappy should be able to get this res onto Crunio, it looks like, with a Tropic, keeping the pressure onto Tianba. Actually, he has to turn his attention to Tianba momentarily after the res. They're the ones who have an angle into him, and Tropic trying to help alleviate that pressure. Nine down to very, very little help, but Tianba's out of this next circle. They have to find a way in. Uh, it looks like RNG Jesus is going to go ahead and take down Tiamba for everybody. His nail up is going to pick up the kills, and now there's just three left. Who's going to go on to the grand finals? 22 now using this opportunity to crest the hillside, but that means Entropic can now see them. A very weakened Polish power has managed to get their res off and still managing to hold on to two. I can't even imagine the tension that these coaches for these teams are feeling in the back room. I mean, uh, everybody has a real shot in this. Two players for Polish Power, certainly they're the weakest, and Tropic certainly the strongest with all four up at 22. Still has something to say about this. It's phase eight. Circle's just going to center up right in the middle of the current one, and that's where we end it. There's still that vehicle. The way that that vehicle landed is actually super fortunate for Polish Power. It gives them a little bit of extra cover in that space. 22 is going to back up and wait this out as long as they can. I really like how Tropic is lined up into this. They're pretty close to the center with Nail Up. QBE still keeping vision on where Polish Power is at, and there's still two members right up against the blue zone, depending on how this goes. They know that 22 and Polish Power are likely going to have to fight themselves, so they're using the circle to their own advantage. Yeah, exactly. They're putting the main, the brunt of their forces onto that eastern side because that's more likely where 22 might have to go, so they have to reinforce that position, make sure that if that three-man force of 22 comes up and over that edge, that they're ready for However, there's a lot of damage done. Cappy's already going to get one. It's going to be two for Cappy. Pulling Boom. power. Lights out. 22. And now a Tropic on the move. They are pushing in as hard as they can see. They've got the rock in front of them. Instead, it's just going to be a defensive line that's just going to try to contain anything that Polish Power is going to try to bring. Crunio's down. Just one up. Sprang back into what could be any type of firefight. He's going to go down. And there you go. And Tropic are going to be our last team to go to the Grand Finals. What a performance there in that game. Tons of kills to boot. Able to hold down that dip in between the hills north of Hacienda so so well for so long four up into the end they spread themselves out in phase eight and get the win so well handled so well maneuvered and that's three EU teams today Whoa, that man. win in the grand survival and go to the grand finals in tropic they got close a couple